Hi there, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Javi Myers. Thank you, Marty. And by the way, uh, coming up in, in a show very soon, we're going to have Marty and maybe even a new intro just now. Thank you so much, Marty. We appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web at ntnm.org where you'll get links to see um, the show on YouTube where over 55,000 people, oh, 55,000 shows have been watched. We're real big on community policing, caps24.org. That's a website that Sonny put up where you can get all the meetings for all the, um, all the 24th district from, you know, including 2412 where, where I run the meetings and 2413 where Sonny runs the meetings and um, lots of other good stuff there. So caps24.org, always big on community policing. At this point, we're going to cut to the chase. Um, coming up in future weeks, we'll have lots of interesting people, so just stay tuned. We always do. Uh, it is a pleasure to have, well, first of all, thanks, Joe Chuck Shea, for bringing our next guest over. We're talking about the man who's got shovel-ready, pro do you have shovel-ready projects? Over in Bernie <laughs> Stone, how you doing? <laughs> you know, I live in 2411. Who runs the meetings there? 2411 is, um... Rich Consulting. Yeah, Rich Consulting, okay. right? He runs the meetings okay. there. Okay. So, uh, oh, but they switch back and forth between the J and uh, Margaret and Mary. Okay. Okay, so shovel-ready projects. There is a shovel-ready project in Whipple, isn't there? Yes, there is, <laughs> it's, and it's under construction already. Yeah, and any chance you can get money from the federal government for it? <laughs> well, actually, it's coming. It's all coming from uh, from two TIFs. Right, the TIFs. Uh, now, it's coming from the TUI TIF, that I know. From the TUI TIF and the Devon TIF. Actually, most of the money is coming from the Devon TIF. Interesting. Yeah, somebody. Uh, now we just had a big public. Well, first of all, I give you credit. We 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 had a big public meeting, and uh, Sunny and I filmed it. It's on YouTube, and if you go to our website at ntnm.org, um, you know you can watch it over there. I watched part of it. And we've got yeah, you the city cut you off after seven minutes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> at this, as the date of the taping, which is which is fourteen days prior to when when, when this is going to be on the air, there were already three hundred watches on the. Uh, well, you can watch it at home. Yes, I can. <laughs> Yeah, yes, we can. That's the, uh... Yes, I can. <laughs> who, who says that? I don't remember. Can Mr. We... President? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But uh, anyway, yeah, all I, all I... well, you know what? I wish the guy well, and, and this country needs it, and the city needs it, and, and I'm certainly hoping that the trickle-down economics comes to Chicago and uh, doesn't get us too wet. <laughs> So uh, listen, it'd be, it's it's I, I basically figure some money will come in. But let's talk about the school. Let's talk about the meeting. Um, we by the way on the web it's in three different segments. We have the public school segment. We have the public building commission segment, and then the question and answer segment. Although there's some interspersion uh, in the three segments. Well, there's some people who couldn't wait to ask questions and, and wouldn't let, didn't want to hear the answers uh, during the course of the of the presentation. I wonder who that could be. <laughs> well, one of the guys, one of the first speakers, by the way, always yells at me, can't you leave Lang alone already? <laughs> and the answer is no. If he ever gets honest, I'll leave him alone, but that'll never happen. <laughs> no comment. Okay. <laughs> you think he'd come if I invited him on the show? Why not? <laughs> he, he ignored me when we, were, when, when we weren't enemies. So uh, I don't think he's going to come on now. Um, so what, what's with the school? What's, what's the, you, you know, is there going to be another meeting? Is, is there... Uh... Well, we, we had indicated, and we still intend to do so, uh, that we would try and, uh, still try and find a, a, uh, a secondary entrance uh, for, onto Kesey Avenue. Uh, frankly, I don't have much hope for it, but I'm I'm going to tr continue to try and find the secondary entrance. Uh, basically, it has to be with the cooperation of People's Gas. I indicated I would take a couple of the um, people who are in the immediate vicinity of the school, and, and we'd go down and visit with pe People's Gas. Uh, it's very difficult, and what people don't understand is it involves millions of dollars, and, and of course, the project already is uh, is close to thirty million dollars. Wow! So uh, millions of dollars don't, don't uh, or like uh, the former senator Everett Dirksen says, it ain't popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he also said, "What a billion here, a billion there." It's, it actually it's up to real pretty, money. <laughs> yeah, pretty soon you're talking real money. <laughs> 
Yeah, he was fun. He was he was a fun senator, especially for a Republican. Yes. So uh, okay, so that, that's people's gas land where that driveway would have to be, or, or well, it it either has to go uh, through the private property, and uh, which would mean the owners of the private property would have to donate a couple lots so we could put a street through, yeah. which costs money. And then it would have to go down the private street, which the owners of, of the land would have to agree to. Or it'd have to go through the public, the, through the people's gas property. Uh, that's the only two courses uh, where we could, we could work it out. Uh, the, 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 uh, the possibility of getting the people who live on the private street to agree is virtually none. Uh, Getting people's gas to work it out is a little better than getting it through private property. Um, just the just the, you see, you've got to understand that a roadway currently exists on people's gas line uh, property, even though we'd still have to continue a new roadway to get to that ro roadway. And, and people don't understand that the cost of a roadway is somewhere like about over $100 a running foot, and that's for a private roadway. Uh, a city-approved roadway would cost much more than that. And then there's considerations of insurance and other costs uh, uh, and the possibility of, of uh, damages and the possibility of liability lawsuits. And that's one of the... the problems that you face when you go over somebody else's property and that's what people don't understand so there's a yeah that, that this is such a litigious society that uh, you got it yeah speaking of a litigation well you know what we should we should finish up on the school first. yeah well talking about the meeting yeah the one thing that's always clear you know having been on the zoning committee for now it's uh well, it's something like 30, over 33 years. Wow. Uh, the one thing I learned on, on all zoning is the, the old expression that we, we, we abbreviate to, to the NIMBY, not in my backyard. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and and that, that's clearly what occurs here. You know, everybody wants the best for everybody else, yeah. except not in my backyard. NIMBY. You know, it's okay <laughs> in somebody else's backyard, yeah. but not in my backyard. And clearly, no matter how much they deny it, that's exactly what we had here. Yeah. Those who are in the immediate vicinity, they're all for it. Everybody who stood up was for the school, as long as you built it somewhere else. <laughs> okay. Or as long as you don't come down my street. Yeah. Or as long as... I'm not, you don't interfere with my lifestyle. Uh, well, unfortunately, that isn't the way it happens. <coughs> so me. those that said the street is too narrow, I said, okay, we'll put parking only on one side. No, 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 we have no place to park. Okay, we won't put parking on one side. We'll make the, uh, uh, you know, or you say you make it two-way street. No, you can't do that because the street's too narrow. No, you, we'll put parking on one side. No, that's no good. Uh, so, you know, no matter what you say, uh, they're, they're not in favor of it. Uh, obviously, uh, <coughs> any solution you come up with is unsatisfactory. Originally, they complained, all oh, the buses will come down the street. What buses? When they're told by the board that at the most, we're talking three buses, because it's only to carry the handicapped kids to school. So at the, probably it would be maybe one or two buses. But at the most, it would be three buses. And it's the, the other kids walk, I mean, uh, or, or they get driven by their parents. It's, so, all neighbor, it's a neighborhood school without uh, busing from other areas. When they get the demographics, yeah. and the demographics shows that an increasing uh, school, popul school kid population, they deny it. Yeah. They, no, 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 this area doesn't have an increasing school population. They deny it. And this is an in increasing school population of kids who would actually attend public school. That's, the figures are wrong. Yeah. Uh, when, we sh when we showed them the actual uh, current, current uh, proposed uh, uh, way it, the district would be, uh, would be uh, put, uh, set out, 
Well, it could change. Okay. I mean, because apparently it's it's an acceptable t- type of uh, it, it brings in kids who would be acceptable to them. I I, I use that term uh, n- with great knowledge. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I don't want to say anything other than the acceptable. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, so every argument you, 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 you display, they, 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 they want to argue with. Uh, so the fact is that contrary to what they say, that we want a school and the school is acceptable, they want a school, but not not in their backyard, and that's the answer, really. Uh, they don't really want the school in their backyard; they want it somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, put it, put it over there. Well, in the, in the middle of the sanitary canal. Well, <laughs> anywhere but here. Now, when yeah, we people don't realize too, by the way, the land on the other side of Kenzie is not Chicago number one. Well, and the Board of Education we t- has to own the property. Initially, we tried to, to exchange land so we could locate the school on Kedzie, on the Chicago side of Kedzie. Yeah. Kedzie is, half of Kedzie is in Lincolnwood. The middle of Kedzie is the dividing line between Chicago and Lincolnwood. I mean, most people don't know, know this, but that happens to be the tr- truth. But in the meantime, we, we tried to do this. We couldn't do it because the land available to us was insufficient on the Chicago side. We tried everything possible to get a different location. We, we searched for six years for a site. This site came to us as a, a really as a lucky break uh, when the property became available. So you, you try, you try the, your best, and this is what happens. Well, basically, the, no matter what was stated, it was, un, was, was debated. Uh, the interesting part of the, the meeting happened really after the meeting. Okay. After the meeting, about half the people in the room came up to me after the meeting and told me that they really had no objections. Really? Now, the funny part of it is those people didn't live on the, the block. Okay. <laughs> and, and they had no objections. Uh, one woman stood up during the course of the meeting and said, I'm on the LSC of Boone. You, you have no concept of how crowded we are and how badly we need this. And this is a terrific solution. And this is, and, and she said, I live here. Yeah. And she said, I favor this. Only one person. Now, I know what happens. People don't want to stand up and say this in, in front of their neighbors and their friends because they're afraid of being uh, being castigated by their peers, and and this is what happens. They're they're teaching classes in um you know in in, in the auditorium and on stairwells and stuff. Well, and and uh, or always whatever. Yeah, well, the, the, it, it's it, it, it's it's really a, a very terrible situation in both schools, and uh, the fact is that both schools are are have have leased uh, outside space. In the case uh, of Boone, they're leasing uh, classrooms at uh, Kins uh, Congregation. In the case of uh, of Clinton, they're leasing space at uh, Saint Mar- uh, Saint, um, Saint, Timothy. Saint Timothy's. So it's uh, it's not a good situation. Uh, and we, we've got to correct it. And both schools have already over expanded beyond belief uh, yeah, size-wise. Well, 1,200 where there should be 900, uh, even larger at, uh, at Boone. Uh, it's, it's just an impossible situation. This new, new school will handle between 700 and 900 students, and which will relieve both schools. And that's the answer. Uh, and it's it's uh, it's a local school. It's not a it's not it's not a, it's not going to bring in kids from other neighborhoods. It's going to bring in kids from our own neighborhood, and that's that's the answer to our problem, and that's that's where we stand. Okay. Um, well, let's move on to other subjects. Okay. And uh, you, you wanted to talk about the litigation, I think. Yes. As a matter of fact, speaking of litigious and um, uh, the. Um, 
Now, now I, I read in the paper, and I give you credit for being one of the one of the th one of the three or four who, who voted against it. But I, I read where a home invader's estate was awarded two and a quarter million dollars. Well, it was a settlement, <laughs> yes. Well, I I voted against it, and I was one of the leaders of the movement against this. Uh, they awarded two and a quarter million dollars to the estate of a home invader who was shot in the back uh, the, by an off-duty policeman who admittedly was shooting wildly no. because one of his first bullets, that he sh that one of the first shots he got off, hit his own father-in-law wow. in the hand. And uh, he was shooting wildly, there's no question of that. Uh, the home invader was carrying a weapon it appeared to be a regular pistol, but as it turned out later, it, it was a, uh, uh, a starter's pistol. Yeah, but for all but, appearances, but it looks like a real gun. It looks like a real gun. Uh, he believed that the individual was turning to shoot at him. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any jury in the world would have given him the $4 million he sued for. Shouldn't have given him a dollar or a nickel. Well, they might have given him something because the, the police officer was shooting wildly. But, but they never would have given him two and, a, uh, two and a quarter million dollars. I mean, in theory, if somebody breaks into your house, you have a right to defend yourself and uh, take the guy out. It's not only that. It's, it's a question of encouraging a lawless society. Yeah. And that's what I said on the floor. Uh, on the city council, not the, literally. Uh, <laughs> on, the on the floor of the city council, of course. But in the meantime, uh, on the, when it appeared b before the finance committee, there were about seven or eight of us who opposed it. Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the administration got to some of them and, 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 uh, and got them to change their mind. Uh, with me on the vote, however, were Brian Doherty, Mary Ann Smith, and Gene Schulter. They voted, along with myself, not to make the settlement. But 30-some-odd aldermen voted with the administration and agreed to make the settlement. Now, there, the, the reason the administration wanted to make the settlement is that at a later date, the police officer was committed to uh, 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 for uh, apparently being insane and they didn't know what kind of witness he'd make. No. But in the meantime, uh, I don't believe any jury would have awarded this, this, uh, this individual, uh, his estate, that kind of money. Yeah, you know, you could plow an awful lot of side streets with that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is... The, 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 when you talk about... Uh, it, it, we've had many cases where I've gone along with the administration on the settlement of cases, but this case just was unbearable, uh, be, uh, I, I, especially a home invader. Uh, thieves are one thing, but home invaders, I'm not going to encourage somebody to be a home invader. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a horrible thing. It absolutely is. So I give you credit for voting the right way on that Thank one. you. Um, we got about five and a half minutes. Um, I, I, you were telling me the concrete's being poured at Devon and Rockwell. Right, right as we're speaking, there, one truck after another is coming in, and they're, and they're uh, finishing up the uh, the foundation on the parking garage on Devon and Rockwell. Yeah, anybody interesting being buried in the cement? Or? Well, not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of shovel-ready projects, but that's a private project. Well, the, the contractor mm -hmm. is in, in Washington at the inauguration, but... Uh, I passed by there and I saw this, the concrete trucks p coming, wa waiting in line to, to go into the job to bore the concrete. Yeah. On my way here, I we we stopped by and took a look and see what see what what was happening. Yeah. How's is there any progress? I mean, with with this economy, of course, you know, there's a lot of things that are standstill. Um, many of our, many of the the jobs that should have been going ahead are being held abs uh, because of the economy. You know, it's hard to get money to, to finance your projects. It's hard to do a lot of things. Uh, I, I'm sorry for that, but in the meantime, uh, our hopes lie with our new president uh, that he'll turn things around and get things moving again. Well, hopefully, yes, he can. 
Yes, he can. <laughs> Got to cheer for the guy. That's for sure. We need it. Yes. Although, you know what? It was interesting to me because, uh, you know, I thought it was very interesting when he invited those 12 conservative columnists. You know, and they, they had dinner together. And uh, I was watching George Will on, the, uh, on one of the Sunday morning news shows. And, and it was over at his house. And he was, he was talking about how, how bright a move it was by Obama from the standpoint that once you get to know a person as an individual, it becomes very hard to stereotype them in the papers. But it was pointed out to me that there's almost no chance that Will and Obama ever will be friendly because, after all, Obama's a White Sox fan and George Will, of course, is a staunch Cub fan. Well, that's not, that, <laughs> first of all, anybody who knows, who knows Barack personally knows it's hard not to be a friend, friendly to, to our president because he's, he's got tremendous personality. Yeah, people and, seem to really like him, that's yes, for sure. Yes, everybody who knows him likes him, and it's hard not to like him. Uh, I, I'm sure uh, his willing his willingness to negotiate, his willing his willingness to work with with people, is going to make a lot of changes not only in domestic matters but also in in foreign policy. I'm hoping uh, that our our uh, position in the world is going to change immensely. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next four years. And with great uh, hope and uh, expectancy, and I'm hoping uh, that uh, that all of our best wishes will go to our new president. Very good. Yeah, definitely got to wish the guy well, and we really need it. If we ever need, uh, you know, s some kind of boost, this this country really needs it right now. Uh, I'm still gonna gonna stay reserved and uh, see what he does. I mean, the guy speaks great. I just hope the actions. And I do like the cabinet and all that, so we'll see how things progress. Last couple of minutes, what, what else would you like to bring up? Well, uh, I, I don't know. You well, tell you know me. What? we got a new commander. As a matter of fact, he'll be on in yeah. the next week or two on the air. Dave uh, is, a, is a great guy. I haven't had an opportunity really to work with him too much. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, if I had any complaints, the only complaint I got is... Uh, is the complaint I've had with others, and that is that they, I, while I don't want to be a policeman, I I would like to be informed when things happen. Uh, when, when there's a murder, I'd like to be informed about that. When there's a major crimes, I'd like to be informed about that. And unfortunately, uh, there's a lack of communications at times uh, from the district. Uh, One thing I, I do want to point out, by the way, just real quick, and I'd be but remiss he, if I didn't you know, say oh, I, ahead, I've got to say this, you that know. he told me when he came on, on duty that during the first month he was going to be, be taking a lot of leave so that he wasn't really present most of the, most of the time. Yeah, it's funny. All, the last three new commanders, when they were new, were, were, on, uh, were on leave within a month yeah. after they came on. But I, I want to I wish um, Steve Cohn and Hank Jacob well, who have meant more to community policing than anybody, other than, uh, together with Bruce Ratner, who were all at Area 3 together. Yeah. And uh, I'm definitely going to miss Steve and Hank, although I want to wish all the luck in the Our world. Our neighbors, too. Yeah, absolutely. They live here and, and, and grew up here in the whole shot. So, and yeah, Hank, Hank's uh, stepdad, Jimmy Sullivan, of course, is somebody you know quite well. Yes. And, uh, and Steve Combs is a great guy, too, and we want to wish him all the luck in the world, and I they're definitely going to be missed. Yes. But, uh, you know, hopefully there's some... They, they actually, they, they're the ones that, that pick their own replacements. So. And their replacements are, are good guys, and, and uh, we'll be able to work with their replacements also. Yeah, they definitely are. At this point, Mickey's hands are, are pointing the wrong way, so we got to get out of here. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much, Alderman Bernie Stone, and uh, thanks, Sonny.